Hey kids, it's Mr. Fla here, hope you're well. And uh, welcome to a beautiful sunny autumnal day here in Great Missenden. And uh, it's a great day to be out on a motorcycle and it's particularly a great day to be out on this motorcycle because this is an incredible machine that I'm riding today. Today I'm riding the BMW K1600 GTL. It's an absolutely mahusive full dress touring machine. It's a beautiful bike. It's a sort of bike that you can just ride thousands of miles across continents on in utmost comfort. It's an amazing bit of kit and uh, stick around stay tuned I'll tell you all about it. Okay so I last rode a K1600 GTL actually about five years ago now and uh, the bike remains BMW's flagship. Since then it's had lots of updates primarily the engine's been tweaked so that it uh, complies with Euro 5 which means the bike can stay on sale which is fantastic because not too many of the K-series bikes did. This one being a bit special of course being a six cylinder engine. And it's had lots of electronic additions as well. It's something that's very obvious that you see when you jump on the bike compared to the bike that I rode before. Thank you Mr White Van Man. Is this massive new TFT on here. This is the 10.5 TFT that we, I think we first saw it on the uh, RT didn't we? BMWs are masters at TFT displays and that one is like their flagship TFT. In some ways it might even be a little bit too big. Anyway before we get carried away about how the bike rides let me show you around this beast. All right, let me show you this mahusive machine then. It's an absolute beaut, isn't it? Well, I think it is. I think it's a handsome looking beast. BMW have done a, a nice job on the styling of this. Uh, the front end just looks a little bit more in keeping with the bike. Then on the RT, I always complain the RT is a little bit bulbous at the front end. This one just seems to be a little bit better in proportion to me. Anyway, let's have a look at a few uh, standout features then. This one's the GTLE, so it's got the extra spotlights, crash bars and stuff. Um, that's that incredible six cylinder engine. As you can see, is canted forward which of course is done to make the weight as low as possible um, although uh, that's only had limited effect of which more later but uh, that's why the engine is at that angle remarkably narrow uh, for a six cylinder engine but again we'll talk about that in a minute uh, as we come down let's just have a little look here look we've got some storage facilities here there's a little button here you press opens up a little flap here you've got another one on the other side it's not very deep though if i get my phone i've got an iphone 13 max pro just to give you an idea of how deep or how big it is look there you go that's as much as you'll get it in so uh, you wouldn't get your phone in that one uh, there's another one on the other side as well let's have a look at that similar deal quite useful to have these little cubby holes for things like wallets but you're not going to get a big phone in there there we go and as you can see it's got a, a separate lock on there as well on the side here you've got some customizable buttons uh, which we'll talk about later on what else to show you oh, let's show you the panniers so the top box at the back again you've got a button here to press to lift this flap and then you open it like so it's got a nice damped opening action and as you can see there's plenty of room in there i can fit my shuba c5 in there no problem at all as well as all my vlogging kit and so on i mean it's not a massive top box but it's certainly not small either and it's great that you can get your helmet in there i find this mechanism a little bit clunky to be fair and then the case is on the side again button to press like so and then you lift this and then they come down in a not particularly uh, damped manner it's got this sort of uh, bit of stuff here to try and damp it but it's a bit i don't know just let's just do that again look yeah i don't know it just looks a bit trumpery to me and they're not massive either they're quite deep but not not the biggest panniers in the world they you can take them off uh, lift them off and get them away so that's nice and easy to do all right what else to show you big dual exhaust i love the six outlets as well just uh, you know making the point that it is a six cylinder engine you've got a single sided swing arm of course it's shaft drive as well it's a nice wheel not that you can see it too well lovely fit and finish on the bike as you'd expect from a bmw yeah what else to say about it i think that's about it oh here at the front end you've got this adaptive headlight for both roll and pitch we'll talk about that a bit more later and yeah there we go so that's the uh, that's the k1600 what she looks like, what, what she ride like. So welcome back aboard the mighty K1600 GTL. Just an impressive bit of kit, whatever way you look at it. If nothing else for its sheer size and road presence. This bike is laden with all sorts of electronics, all sorts of comfort features and that amazing engine. So it can't really help but put a grin on your face, but is it actually 
a practical proposition. Well, let's go through the bike in the usual way that I do a review to see what we think of it. Well, first off, comfort. Well, that is where this bike absolutely, supremely scores, doesn't it? The comfort on this bike, I'd like to say second to none, which is true. It's definitely one of the two most comfortable bikes I've ever ridden. The other one being the Honda Goldwing, of which more a bit later, I'm sure. This machine, massive comfy seat on it. The seat is heated. It's nice and wide. You can sit on here for hours on end. The handlebars are quite close towards you, quite pulled back. So quite a relaxed feel to the handlebars. Nice and wide. And your legs, well, they're at uh, a very easy angle as well. Slightly acute. Not, you know, your feet aren't forward in a cruiser position. They feel more, well, it's not a sports position either. It's just a comfortable position. So, you know, you can't beat the comfort on a K1600 GTL. It's just amazing for comfort. How about the cockpit area then, the things you're looking at here? Well, it really is a beautiful place to be. We already mentioned that uh, incredible TFT on here. It is amazing, it's beautifully clear. It's easy to use via the whiz wheel. I mentioned just now that BMW just do the best TFTs in the business and I think that is still the case. Very easy as, as well to use, all the features and functions on it. Not too many buttons on the handlebars actually when you compare it to some other bikes. If you look at things like the, uh, I think the most busy, complicated handlebar setup I know is the Africa Twin. Well, this is way more simpler than that. It's actually way more simple than the Honda Goldwing as well. But uh, it doesn't mean to say it's got any less features and functions. Those are actually hidden more within the bike's operating system. So for things like heated seat and indeed heated grips, you have to go into the bike's menus to get those on, which actually I don't like. Now you can program some of the buttons down here, there are these four or five, actually it's four, uh, programmable function buttons down here on the left hand side of the fairing, the same as the RT has. You can program those to put the heated seat and heated grips on if you want to, so that gets around that particular issue. But you still do have to dig deep into the menus for some basic functions that I would rather just have dedicated buttons. That's just me, but the upside of that is it does keep the handlebars relatively straightforward and not too cluttered with buttons which actually is quite a good thing because it does mean your muscle memory can work out where these buttons are you know it's easy you don't have to look at the handlebars to find out where the indicators are or the menu button or indeed the horn which my fingers automatically go to I've got a BMW GS myself the controls are very similar so this feels very similar to me and is very intuitive to use so no complaints from me really on the uh, user interface, if you like, how you control things on the bike. One thing that is quite a surprise on it, it's got a cruise control of course, it's the usual BMW cruise control which is excellent, but it doesn't have the radar adaptive cruise control on here, which is a bit of an omission because of course it's on the current RT and it's on other bikes, so uh, a little bit surprised by that, I wouldn't mind betting if there's another iteration of the big K1600. I wouldn't mind betting that will gain the radar cruise control. Don't pull out, thank you very much. So because it doesn't have the radar, it doesn't have the blind spot monitoring either, which I think is just an amazing feature that radar gives you. But anyway, it's not here on the K1600 GTL. It's worth mentioning, of course, that the K1600 comes in many flavours, four flavours in fact. There's the basic K1600 GT, then there's this, the, well, or sorry, there's the GTL then, which comes with the top box and a few other bits and pieces. Then there's the GTL LE, which is the model I'm riding today, which comes with the top box on the back, as well as things like uh, the quick shifter up and down, the, uh, I think BMW call it Gear Assist Pro, don't they? Bit of an omission that doesn't come as standard on the basic bike, but it doesn't, you have to get the LE for that. Also comes in the bagger form, without the top box, slightly redesigned rear end. I rode that last back in 2017 as well. I'll put a link to my review of the bagger version of the bike. That's also been updated since the 2022 model with the new TFT and so on. And then what have I missed? Oh, the uh, Grand America is the other version, which is the bike that arguably is most similar to the Goldwing. It's got uh, sort of 
bag of styled bags at the back at the back end if that makes sense it looks more Americana it's got the big top box on it as well slightly more relaxed ergonomics and riding as the GTL has by the way the GTL has slightly more relaxed ergonomics in terms of its positioning of the foot pegs and the handlebars if I were getting one of these then it would be the I'd probably go for the Grand America actually because I like the look of that if not I get the GTL LE it's a personal taste thing really as to which one you like the looks of most all right before we come back to uh, what the bike's like to ride then let's have a quick whiz through the specs on the machine shall we all right, spec time on the K1600 GT LE in this case then, as ever, written them down so I don't make any glaring errors. Right, let's start off with then, with the uh, the main thing of this bike, well, as far as I'm concerned it is, and that is the engine. Here we are, this big six cylinder lump, puts out 160 brake horsepower at 6,750 RPM. It's actually a 1649 CC inline six cylinder. It's now Euro 5 friendly, as I said. 180 Newton meters of torque or 133 foot pounds at 5,250 RPM, so quite low revving. Brakes on the front, we've got these dual discs, these are 320mm discs on here and it's got uh, four pot calipers. On the rear, I hope you can see it's got a 320mm disc with a two pot caliper. Suspension wise, at the front end it's got the clever uh, BMW duo lever suspension. It's difficult to see but there's like a double wishbone arrangement in there. Can you see? And it separates out the braking from the steering. It's very clever, stops that fork dive. I absolutely love that. On the rear, uh, I don't think it's got anything particularly clever except for this uh, dynamic ESA. Again, I don't think we can actually see well, around the other side. We might be able to see the little stepper motor that controls that under there somewhere. Anyway, that's the uh, dynamic or semi-automatic um, suspension on the back, if you like. It's got 135 mil of travel on the rear. Seat height on here, 750 uh, millimetres, so nice and low. I can get my feet almost flat on the deck at five foot eight with shortish legs. The weight of this mahusive beast, 358 kilograms wet, which actually on paper, I think might even be a little bit lighter than the Goldwing, but in, in practice, it feels an awful lot heavier. Fuel tank on this holds 26.5 litres, good for about 250 miles. Electronics, well, where do we start? It says here, dynamic electronic suspension, which we talked about. Hill Start Control Pro, ABS Pro, traction control. It's got the reverser, three riding modes, LED lights, adaptive headlights, both up and down and side to side. We'll talk about that in a minute. 10.25 inch TFT uh, audio system with... Luckily, these GoPros are tough. Audio system with uh, DAB. Uh, central locking, uh, or on the LE anyway, it's got central locking, although a bit of a doubt as to exactly what that does. We'll talk about that more later. Heated seats and grips, phone connectivity, emergency call, cruise control, though not radar, as we said, tyre pressure monitoring and gear shift assist on the LE. So not all those are available on all models, but uh, they are available on the LE as optional extras. Priced according to the website, the K1600 starts at £22,390. I configured one up uh, together with the Comfort Pack that came out just shy of 25 grand. So in reality, you're looking about 25 grand for one of these. Uh, comes in various flavours. Uh, I mentioned the Bagger, the Grand America, the uh, GT and the GTL. Check out BMW's website for all the differences on those different types of bikes. Uh, and yeah, there we go. That's the a whiz through of the spec. OK, so much for the numbers then. What is she like to ride? Well, in a word, beautiful. Riding around on this once you're moving, it's a lovely place to be. It's got that uh, duo lever front end. So when you brake, there's no appreciable front end dive. I absolutely love that about the bike. I love that about the BMW GS. I love that about the Honda Goldwing. They all have that same double wish bend, wishbone, sorry, front end, or very similar technology, which means that the braking is separated from the suspension. Some people don't like it. They say it gives you a vague feeling on the front end. I personally like it. It means you don't get a hideous fork drop, uh, dive, and it makes for a very comfortable ride. Suspension on this, is dynamic ESA so that's the semi-active always adjusting electronic suspension that BMW does and it is it's beautiful these roads that I come and do these tests on I always come on this same road and the reason I do it is because it's particularly bumpy well on this bike you wouldn't know that it's it's properly beautiful the ride on here well, I'm going to adapt the route slightly today because I want to go on a slightly faster road as well because of course the natural habitat of bikes like these full dress tourers is you could argue on big fast roads if you're going cross continents so uh, I will go on a faster road in a minute just to see what the wind protection is like on this bike you can make a guess with this massive fairing and massive windscreen but we'll give that a go in a minute so yeah suspension is lovely 
white van behind me and a white truck in front so I can't wind it up on this road but uh, as I say we'll do that in a minute on a fast road. In terms of handling it's remarkably agile actually. The front end on this feels a lot lighter than the Goldwing which I know well. In fact it feels lighter I think than the RT as well which is bizarre I don't know how they've done that. It must be just down to the geometry of the bike. Once you're moving it's very easy to change direction on this. Way way easier than you'd expect on such a big heavy motorcycle. But no, I say when you're moving, the thing that I really don't like about this bike, which isn't changed from the, uh, the previous model, is the way that weight feels when you're at slow speed or come to a halt. I'm starting to dread it now, look, I'm coming up to this uh, junction, so I'm intuitively moving forward in the seat so I can make sure I get my feet properly down. Because when you come to a halt in one of these, actually maybe I can keep her rolling, yes I can, but even at slow speeds, that 358 kilograms makes itself well known. Even though they've counted the engine forward, this still, I think, is a very top heavy bike. And although on paper it's lighter than a Goldwing, depending on the variant you get, it does not feel lighter when you're riding it. Something I absolutely love on this motorcycle is that engine. Six cylinder engines are just so smooth as you'd expect. Just oodles of power on this. Significantly more power than the Goldwing. At 160 horsepower versus 125. But uh, I guess you don't actually buy these bikes for outright power and top speed, do you? But I suppose if you are coming from a sports bike world and you want to boast the biggest power numbers, then this is the one to go for. It is undoubtedly a lovely engine on here though. The mirrors on the bike work beautifully, they're massive. I've got one of my cameras on there so you have to take my word for it when I tell you that they work well. If you look in the one on the right there, look, you can see there's no vibration. They're stuck way out there on the fairing so you've got a great view behind, a nice wide view as well. So really good situational awareness, understanding what's going on behind you. And that works the other way on the K1600 as well, by which I mean you've got great presence on this bike. Other cars can see you coming. This GTL LE is fully loaded, it's got the extra spotlights down below on here. The massive headlights on here, those adaptive headlights, both for pitch and roll, if you like. So when you go round a corner with these headlights at night, they do light up round the corner for you but also because of the automatically adaptive suspension on here they also change the height of the lighting on here as well very clever stuff so theoretically they should always be pointing in the right direction just try the front brakes on here very good twin discs on here as we saw twin four pot calipers it doesn't feel under braked at all nothing behind me let's just try a bit harder now they bring you to a halt rapidly and they're not horribly grabby or anything like that nice and progressive they seem to be fine let's just try that rear brake actually that works remarkably well often rear brakes are just a bit meh on motorcycles aren't they well not on the K1600 might just be because it's a new bike I don't know but uh, the rear brake on here seems very good indeed so she stops and goes well she's really comfortable and rides nicely what other practical things have we got to talk about well the panniers and top box, we've looked at those already. It's also got a couple of cubby holes on here, either side, which are quite small. Oh, that's where that weight comes in now as I come to a stop. I can get my feet almost flat on the floor. They've done a clever job, even though this is an inline six cylinder engine. It's a long stroke engine. In other words, the cylinders are tall, and they've made them tall so that they can make their width, the bore, less. And that means you can make a narrower engine. So even though there are six cylinders across this bike, it doesn't feel super duper wide. In fact, if anything, the Goldwing might feel a little bit wider. So it's quite clever how they've packaged the engine to keep it feeling narrow. And that means your feet can get on the deck. So it's got that low seat height. And at my five foot eight height, I can almost flat foot it, which is just as well. Because if I was on my tippy toes, I wouldn't feel at all confident about coming to a halt. In fact, I don't feel at all confident about coming to a halt. I checked with the BMW UK before I got this bike, and I've been borrowing it now for a couple of weeks. I've been riding it around, 
trying to get used to it to do a fair comparison with the, the Honda Goldwing which will be the next video on this bike by the way if you're interested in a comparison between this the latest 2022 BMW K1600 GTL and the 2022 Honda Goldwing stick around stay tuned to the channel because in a video or two's time I will bring in you will be bringing you that direct comparison review how do the two compare oh there's some traffic lights yeah they're green good I don't have to stop <laughs> On bikes like these, you do have to plan where you're going to stop. Think about where you're putting your feet down because once you get past that critical angle, these bikes are going over. And what I was about to say was I did speak to BMW before I got the loan of the bike to check that it was insured for me to take Mrs. Flyer on the back because I thought a fair comparison would be one with a passenger on the back of this to see how she got on with that big, um, comfortable looking backrest on here. And again, compare it to the Honda Goldwing, which my wife knows as well. But, having ridden this for a bit now, I just don't feel confident enough to take it out with a passenger on the back. I know that sounds a bit wimpy, but I'm not a particularly big bloke, as I say, I'm 5 foot 8, I weigh about 74 kilograms, I'm sort of a small medium fellow, and this is not a small medium bike. I think, if you're a big strapping 6 footer, then that, that ain't going to be a problem. You could obviously take somebody on the back of this, that's what the bike is designed for. But if you're a smaller chap, and you want to go touring, around some Nagerie roads on the, in the Alps with your missus on the back or just thinking about maybe doing the Balakna bar or something with the wife on the back of this it just gives me the screaming heebie-jeebies so I haven't taken my wife out on the back of this bike which is a shame because I know that's what everybody wants to know how does it compare but again on that forthcoming or upcoming video where I compare the two bikes I will at least get my missus to sit on both bikes I hope I remember to do that so she could tell you what they feel like in that respect but I'm not going to be riding with my missus on the back of this for that reason I just don't feel confident enough about the high weight of this bike and that is its Achilles heel I guess we'll come back to that when I do the summary in a minute all right now I mentioned I was just going to I was going to adapt my normal test route because I want to try a faster road well up here on the left is a nice wide fast road or I can wind her up a bit and just see what she's like from a wind protection point of view, so uh, let's head up there now and do that. Grey van in front of me now, excellent. And this sun is bright today. The quick shift assist pro on this bike works beautifully by the way, the gearbox is lovely and smooth on here. As I mentioned, you do have to have that as an extra here on the LE version of the bike, which is a bit of a shame, you'd hope that would come as standard. Right, I'm hoping I can get past this van because he's blocking me view. Right, I'm going to pop the uh, screen up. It's on this button on the left, which is great. Up she goes, and as it goes up, you can probably hear through the helmet noise that the wind noise that I did have, the slight buffeting I did had, have is now completely gone. And the top half of me is in what I would call a bubble of calm. I'm doing look, almost 60 miles an hour. To be fair, I can feel a little bit of turbulence around the top of my head. Let's just squirt by here. This is where this engine comes into its own. Check this out. Amazing. And then at slightly faster speeds, I'm now getting a lot of suction on, on my back. And I'm, I can feel myself being drawn forward towards the screen, which I find slightly unusual. I've experienced it before on other motor motorcycles of this type. But the K1600 really does have it markedly. I don't know if that would disappear if you had a pillion but it's as the air is tumbling over my back and sucking me forward into this low pressure area in front at higher speeds it's quite horrible if you put the windscreen down you lose that suction effect which is nice but now as you can probably hear I've got much more wind in my face but I personally prefer it with the screen down number one I like to look over the screen and uh, also I just don't like that suction effect that you get on your back on the K1600 it's weird as I say it's not uh, specific to this bike but it is the worst I've known on any bike on the K1600. Luckily when the screen is down it's it's really wide you then you, you're then greatly protected. Suddenly with it down I've got less wind on on the sides of me as well and the wind that does come off the top that you can maybe hear on the on the helmet microphone that is touching the top of my helmet is clean air it's not dirty air it's not buffeting me around so the wind protection as you'd expect is excellent on here but there's a little bit more 
turbulence down around your legs than I would have expected and there's a bit more of that suction effect than I would like. So the bike has all sorts of electronics, I've, I've not even touched the surface of those on this review because you could, you know, it's an hour's video just there on the ele electronics. What I would say about the electronics, it's got, it's got all the things you need like uh, traction control and uh, ABS Pro, I think the traction control Pro as well, which are excellent heated grips, heated seat, which are brilliant things. It's got what BMW calls central locking, which basically means keyless start and then you've got the, the you know the fuel cap that's keyless so you have to open that within a certain time period once you've turned the bike off for that to be active and I think that also applies to the little cubby holes I'm not sure although actually they've got a, a lock on so I'm not sure it does certainly it doesn't apply to the panniers so when they say central locking I'm not entirely sure what that means because it doesn't lock the panniers up so that's a bit disappointing I'm not a massive fan of keyless ride anyway but on this bike if, if it locked everything including the panniers that would make some sense wouldn't it but in this case it makes even less sense because you have to use the key for those separately that's weird so i'm not too keen on that the other thing talking about electronics that i'm not keen on doesn't have an inbuilt sat, sat nav native so if you want to use a sat nav you've got to use your phone linked up to the bike now again i don't want to just you know single out bmws for this but i've never managed to get one of those um phone connected sat navs to work 100 percent reliably all the time I've struggled with them on BMWs, I've struggled with them on Triumphs, I've struggled with them on Hondas. They're just not reliable enough. They also can zap your phone. Of course, in the case of this bike, you can have your phone on charge while you're connected. And it does, when it does work, it looks really good on here. It's a full featured uh, sat nav with, you know, full turn by turn, full mapping, etc. But it does rely on you having your phone connected to do that. I far prefer a native sat nav built in or even a, you know a separate box like BMW do on for example the GS where you've got that you know the nav 6 mounted up I just think that's a better solution than connecting to your phone so that's something I don't like about the bike and it's a little bit disappointing you'd think on a bike with this much real estate they could easily do a built-in sat nav I wouldn't mind betting that comes in a later iteration and then I guess as I'm summarizing the bike which I've kind of got into summary mode now the thing that uh, the real Achilles heel about this bike is its weight Whilst you're riding, like all big bikes, that weight disappears, it's not a problem, it's super agile, everything about it is great. But when you slow down and you use slow speed handling, or you're moving it around your garage, goodness me, it's really difficult to live with this bike, it's really hard to move around. It's quite hard to get off the side stand if you're on anything but the flattest of surfaces, which is why, by the way, I did those walk around segments of the video in the train station, because I knew that was a flat concrete surface. I didn't do it in the usual bit by the grass that I would do it because I, I feared that I wouldn't be able to lift the bike up again and the fact that when I come to a stop at every junction it feels tenuous it feels like I'm going to drop the bike and that alone means I'm not going to take a passenger on the back so for me that means even though there's so much to love about this bike it's such a, an amazing bit of technology it's a beautiful bike with a beautiful engine it looks great it goes beautifully but the weight thing would just put me off having one don't take my word for it have a ride of this, have a ride of its competitors, see what you think. But for me, it's a thumbs down for the BMW K1600 GTL. So there we go, sorry BMW about that. Lots to love about the bike, but it's not for me. I hope you enjoyed the review. If it's the first time you've been to my channel, don't let it be the last, do hit that subscribe button. I don't just do bike reviews here on the Missenden channel, on the Missenden Flyer. But I do bits and pieces about how to look after your bike. I do monthly bike news, I do tours, trips and tours at home and abroad, everything and everything to do with motorcycles. Hello sir. I cover it here on the Missenden Flyer. It'd be great to have you along. All right, safely back to Great Missenden. He says, negotiating the roundabout very carefully. <laughs> That's it for this time. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mr. Flyer. Cheerio.